And I do want to acknowledge the two parents that spoke this evening and parents who have emailed or reached out. Uh, we fully understand your desire, your children's desire to be back in person together in school. We fully recognize how challenging it is to maintain home um, demands and support your child at the same time let alone be missing out on the social connection and all of the other things that school provides. So our goal is your goal, and that is to have our kids back with us. Um, that's Our staff want the same thing. We do truly want to work toward that January date. Um, and I, I know that the setting the targets and then not being able to move forward at that time is not only disappointing or confusing to children, um, let alone disappointing for kids and adults. It is always... Um, very difficult, but we've continued to do that so that we can have a firm target set so that we are able to move forward and are as prepared as possible. So I do know that you know there's different feelings or opinions about that. Um, and at the same time, um, I do truly want us to have firm plans in mind so that we are as prepared as possible for students, parents, staff to make that return to come together on site. So tonight I want to provide um, information related to our current status of full remote through um, winter break and the end of first semester, and then discuss um, any of the related information that we have. So we certainly have a lot to look back on over this past nine months and over the time frame of the, the 2020 year in totality. And through all the challenges, there have been highlights, there have been positive um, you know, silver linings on the cloud of things that we are truly proud of, of our families, our students, our staff, and how they've adapted and innovated and created and just in, endured and sustained and continue to show up um, and continue to work truly hard, even when it feels um, more difficult than ever to do so. So we, we truly recognize that. Um, and we do want to set our sights on looking forward, on coming back together in person. And so as we stand now, we are still in our status of full remote learning for all of our students through the duration of first semester. Um, we are in this period of um, transition where we are planning to work toward um, um, implementing our hybrid model. And so we've had many starts and stops. We've had um, some early successes with programming and bringing students back on site. And we've had a, a great deal of time to not only refine remote learning, but also refine our plans for um, bringing the hybrid model into full effect. A new timeline has been shared with um, the community and our staff as a whole that outlines what that phase return will look like um, in, the, in the second semester. Um, right after our return, we will have a time frame of continued full remote, and we feel that this is in the best interest of health and, and safety, um, simply because we do not know what the holiday is going to bring, and if we will see a surge in positivity um, to a substantial level of um, community transmission, and if we um, see that as um, the science suggests and as trends have shown in the past, we want to create that buffer of time before we begin that transition. So I want to talk a little bit about each level, and I know this chart um, can look somewhat confusing, but it does have our target um, start as January 19th for those um, students, programs in our first wave of transition. We also have learned some things um, in, in the sense of staggering so that we can have um, the best success possible and making sure that we can bring our students on site. So I'm gonna break this down by level, and then after that speak um, to the health metrics um, and then answer any questions. So beginning um, on January 19th, for our STEP program that was um, fully operational previously, um, we would of course continue our full remote model for those families who have selected that. That's a, a currently what our students are experiencing now with synchronous and asynchronous work time. Um, also time for their um, afternoon and morning support and their instructional blocks. The on-site program would begin on their regular schedule, which would be daily on-site Tuesday through Friday, and this would begin on January 19th. And this is the same times that they have experienced previously with 7.15 to 12.30 and with a lunch, a grab and go, and um, community-based instruction as allowable. Um, for our high school program, um, we would continue our full remote model for those who have selected that, and that's five days a week, and then hybrid would be a gradual return by level. As it's outlined in the chart, um, we would we have two site, uh, two site um, on site two days a week 
for each group on Tuesday, Thursday, or Wednesday, Friday, dependent on the last name. Um, Mondays would be remote for all learners together in one virtual classroom. And this is a blend of on-site learning and at-home learning with all teachers. And so this does involve um, the simultaneous modes of instruction for those who are on-site versus those who are joining remotely. Um, I do want to invite Mr. Um, Adam Herter, Executive Director of Middle and High School into the virtual board meeting room. And he will be joining us shortly um, here to answer any questions um, about this transition. If I move back to um, the timeline, you will see that our special programs will return on site the week of January 25th and 12th grade will be on site on an alpha rotation with the two days per week. And then from there, we would move into ninth grade on alpha rotation and then 10th and 11th. And Mr. Herter, can you please speak to the transition that will occur with um, the full seven period day um, beginning January 25th? Thank you. Um, can everyone hear me okay? Just wanna make sure, thank you. So um, it was significant planning with uh, both teachers, the uh, building leaders, and administrators, principals, and their teams um, at the high school level. Um, we were able to put together a plan um, allows for teachers and students to transition from first to second semester. Um, we felt that it was important uh, to meet the needs of all of our students, that students would be returning to a regularly scheduled day once we have students back on site, um, thus the seven period uh, per day schedule. So for uh, all high school students, whether they're in chose to be hybrid and on site two days a week or fully remote, uh, they would follow that seven period per day schedule, um, which is essentially the same as what our high school students have been used to in the past. Um, the differences would be a 10 minute break in between each period, which adds up to a, a full hour a day. Um, we feel that that is um, appropriate to allow students who are, um, especially those who are remote all day on Zoom to be able to uh, have those breaks in between classes to transition. And then of course, students have a lunch and many have an advisory period that provides an additional break to do additional work uh, independently. Um, that schedule will transition on the 25th. Um, the chart that Superintendent Kinder showed prior to these last few slides would have uh, 12th grade students back on site first. Um, of course, we would like to have all of our students back <clears throat> at the same time. The size of our schools make that um, logistically very difficult. And so we have a staggered return working with 12th grade first for a few different reasons. One being that that grade has missed um, you know, the spring of their junior year as well as the fall of their senior year. Um, and of course, graduation is, is our number one priority for high school for students to be set up for post-secondary success. And so on the 25th, um, that week would be when 12th graders return on site. The next week would be ninth graders would be added to the mix. And the following week, which is the week of the 8th of February, 10th and 11th graders would be added back on site based on this current proposed timeline, uh, which means we basically have a three week window to transition all of our uh, staff back on site, as well as all of the students who are hybrid learners. Um, and that is essentially the plan for high school. The only other nuance that Superintendent Kinder was mentioning this would be that students who are remote, whether they're fully remote or if they're students who just happen to be home so if they come to school in person on tuesdays and thursdays on wednesday and friday those students would also be at, at home re learning remotely they will be zooming into the classroom for live instruction um, and while of course this uh, presents uh, a challenge for our educators and our students um, it's a model that we've seen in many other districts um, especially high schools in the area and around the country um, and the real positive benefit of that is it means that students will have access to their teacher in all of their classes every day um, some in person some remote but there will not be days where students don't have access to direct instruction from their teacher 
and we felt that that was a high priority um, because the the you know while all, all of our students have different needs every one of our learners is certainly unique one of the major themes we've heard from students um, especially and parents and teachers was you know, we would like things to get as much as they can back to normal school and normal school is going to class every day seeing your teacher every day um, and we feel that it's important for kids to get back into that routine and of course it will it will take some time our schools are ready to support our kids whether they're on site or remote given that there are some challenges with this format of course but we're uh, excited to get the kids back on campus um, and then for teachers to be you know seeing all their students every day even though we're transitioning to a hybrid approach okay thank you very much um, the middle school transition, um, similar to um, what we have planned before, and I will let Mr. Herter speak to this as well, um, we'll continue with a full remote model with five days of learning at week at home um, by preference or selection. And then we would begin our hybrid transition, with, which includes also a gradual return by grade level and two days, of, um, two days on site based on the alpha of the last name. Um, either a Tuesday, Thursday, or a Wednesday, Friday. And again, Monday's full remote with the whole class together virtually. Um, and then this, again, is a blend of on-site learning and at-home learning. And our special programs, our self-contained programs, would be on-site four days a week, um, following along with the general education program Tuesday through Friday. Thank you. So just to add, um, middle school is similar to high school in a few ways. One is the, the format for instruction. So this model of having uh, students both live in the classroom as well as uh, remoting in from home, um, like we just discussed for high school, would be the same for middle school, um, which again means all middle school students would have access to uh, every teacher for the classes they have every day. Um, Similarly, students would attend Tuesday, Thursday, or Wednesday, Friday, meaning that um, at all levels, but you know, middle school and high school students um, in the same family would be coming on the same days. Um, the unique differences for middle school would be the staggered return. So again, we're working with a three week time period, uh, beginning with sixth graders on the week of the 25th and then seventh graders the week after that, and eighth graders uh, subsequently the third week of that transition. Um, students would be on site again uh, two days a week if they chose the hybrid option. On Monday, all students would learn remotely, uh, which would look similar to how things are now. The middle school schedule, uh, even though students aren't on site yet, starting right after vacation on the fourth, the schedule is going to return to the through middle school schedule of a full block schedule each day. Um, this gives our teachers um, not only a little bit more time, however, you'll notice that like, for example, block one in the chart there is 80 minutes. Um, that does not mean that middle school students are gonna sit in each class for 80 minutes staring at their teacher teaching directly to them on Zoom uh, four times a day. Um, the way that will work is there will be instruction. There will also be support time for individual students or smaller groups of students while some kids work independently. And that's really our focus of professional learning with teachers is how to, um, and our teachers are already very skilled at this to begin with, uh, creatively use that 80 minutes block of time where doing some direct instruction, some student support time. Uh, so middle school uh, families who are used to that support time at the end of the day, essentially that support time is just broken up into each class period. So kids would be able to get that support while still in that block, not having to wait till to go back on at the end of the day and schedule time with a teacher. Um, the schedule will function the same as our middle school students and families are used to. Kids will have uh, their two days a week that they're on site if they chose hybrid, but all students, whether hybrid or remote, will still maintain the A-B curriculum rotation. And those in middle school are familiar with that. A and B days, essentially meaning on A days and B days, we have mathematics and English language arts. Uh, courses like science and social studies rotate. So a student would have science on an A day, for example, and social studies on a B day. Um, and while this calendar does show uh, students having science three days and social studies only two days that week, 
Um, keep in mind that AB does just continue to, so the next week they would have science twice and social studies three times. So over a two week period, uh, that A and B rotation does equal out both with our careers courses, um, as well as our science and social studies split. Um, you can also see the lunch lunchtime on there. So there'll be a break for lunch for students who are learning remotely as well. Um, and that are, that's really the only unique differences for middle school uh, compared to high school. So similar models, just some unique differences with the way classes are scheduled. Thank you very much. Okay, our elementary school transition, um, again, will offer the full remote model by selection, and that's a continuation of the five days per week. Um, there will be um, the process of rostering changes initiated so that we can have designated remote learning teachers assigned, um, and we'll have an adjustment of class rosters as required. The hybrid model is scheduled to begin on January 19th. Um, I'd like to invite Executive Director of Pre-K-5, Jill Chukalis, to um, speak to the hybrid model and what parents can expect um, for the transition for our elementary students. Sure. Hi, good evening. Um, ours is very similar to the middle school plan. So we have within our five-day week, all Mondays are full remote. So students will be together, whether they're on an A schedule or a B schedule, they'll be together in one remote classroom with their teacher. Um, and then we have an AB schedule similar to middle school where on Tuesday, Thursday, students on the A schedule will attend full days. Um, on the B schedule, students will be attending on Wednesdays and Fridays for full days. When students are not in school with the teacher, they are at home learners and they are doing asynchronous learning and they are also receiving um, small group instruction from our support staff, including our intervention enrichment coordinators, our reading recovery coordinators, um, and other supporting staff that will be pulling small groups. Our ESL, um, English as Second Language teachers will be pulling their groups during that time as well. Um, we will begin our model on January 19th. Um, and our self-contained special education programs will be beginning with us this time. Previously, they began, they transitioned separately. And this time they're going to transition with us. Many of the students in those programs push into our gen ed classrooms. And so we're going to keep them together um, for this transition. Um, I would just like to add that the kindergarten and first grade would be the first group to transition on site. And then the following week, very next week, second and third grade, and then followed by fourth and fifth grade. All right. And then our early childhood transition, again, um, continuation of uh, what is currently in place um, for those who elect that, as well as the on-site model. And our phase transitions for early childhood will begin Monday, January 19th. And this is dependent on programming. Um, we run a great deal of programs at our Dr. James Mitchum Early Childhood Center. And um, we would run a Monday through Thursday schedule for those programs, um, just as our families are accustomed to if they've been with us at the EC before. And Fridays um, are a focus on off at, um, at home learning um, and a focus on social emotional learning. And so for our, um, our early childhood families um, in the programs, you can see that we have that designated um, the IEP students, multi needs and stellar will be our first group to transition in the week of the 19th, followed by IEP students with multiple services and blended. And then the remainder of our programs will transition after that. And so like with all of our levels and transitions, our parents can expect communication directly from their building um, or their program related to the transition and what to expect. So moving forward um, with our plans securely in place and with our wrapping up um, this time, this week before break, and then coming back into remote and then moving into our um, our transition period, we of course are continuing to monitor the community health metrics um, and this is a, a process of continued assessment and this of course will continue over the next several weeks. Um, I've shared this previously and this is county level metric guidance in which we look at the levels of community transmission from minimal, moderate to substantial and under each of those categories there's a, several metrics that we monitor. Um, and there is alert levels defined on those metrics. This is not black and white. It um, merely creates a set of parameters for schools um, to use to determine 
the level of community transmission and then what that means for their reopening plans. And this includes things um, including the test positivity, the youth case number, the overall county case number, the weekly county case rate, and the alert um, level that's identified with that. Um, related to our Region 7, that includes Will and Kankakee counties, um, we have, we're seeing a, a lower seven-day rolling average at 12.8% for our region as of December 11th. So that is good news. Um, we are not um, below that 12% threshold. That's the threshold identified um, with us consecutive days underneath that threshold to remove the increased mitigations that our region is currently under. So we are moving in that direction. So that's definitely a trend that um, we hope to see continue so that we can be in a place, um, as a, a good place as a region and as a county um, and our immediate area as well. This data here is a little bit older. Um, it has not, it's accessed as recent as today, but it has um, only through week 49, which went through December 5th. So the positivity rate you see here at 16.6%. Test positivity, um, that has decreased in the, the time frame from December 5th to today, December 14th. So you'll see that in the next slides. Um, it is at a substantial rate um, based on this time frame. Um, and we are looking at the new cases per 100,000, which is still at a substantial rate as well. The new cases and the youth case increase, um, those metrics have um, lowered to a minimal rate, so that's a, a positive indication as well. We do continue to monitor at the zip code level, um, our seven day rolling average for our immediate zip codes, and those are um, noted at the top of the slide, is at 12.6%, um, and that's um, a decrease from where we were previous, um, you know, the last updates that I've provided. And there's our 14 day rolling average at 13.3%. So we have seen a decrease in those areas as well. This slide um, pre presents kind of a graphic view of how these indicators um, have trended over time since, um, you know, with the starts and stops and the plans that we have had and then had to pause. Um, the red shading um, indicates that at a substantial level, and what we're seeing then is some of the metrics are showing some signs that the, the recent surge that we saw um, is waning, particularly the seven day rolling averages. However, the case counts um, do remain high and we're continuing to watch that and we're seeing some trends start to inch upward. So that second column shows you a trend line over the past 30 days and you can see we had that, that large spike, that surge, and then you see that we had a decrease and then some leveling out. So, this is something that we will, of course, continue to monitor um, and ensure that we are in a good position to begin our transition plan. Um, and that, of course, we will have um, continued communication um, to our families, to our staff, so that our students can be prepared for what to expect and our staff can be prepared as well. We are continuing to ask our staff and our families to report. Um, and so the current known reported cases of staff and students has certainly decreased. Um, of course, we cannot be certain that that means that there is an actual decrease or if there's just a decrease in reporting, but it is good practice and it, does, it is informative to us to let us know the impact of COVID on the, the families in our community, our staff members and their families. Um, from a health and safety perspective, and also from um, just the ability to attend. Um, if we have a high number of students in quarantine or a high number of staff in quarantine, that certainly is high impact in our district. So we continue to monitor this. Um, I feel very confident in the, the systems and the protocols that we've developed and our staff has been working very hard to implement. So this will put us in a, a good place to um, have a handle on uh, what the impact is in our immediate school district. Um, I, I mentioned um, the known staff positive cases um, in isolation, as well as known staff and students in quarantine. Um, and so, yes, we have seen um, a decrease from what we were seeing um, around the time of the, the surge in the community, and we will continue to monitor. When we return, um, on, when we come together in person on site, we will have um, reminders to our family about the process for symptom screening and certification. Um, we if families have not yet um, received that information via mail, and that would um, be our high school um, families, you will be receiving that prior to the transition. And we will continue to communicate this because it's truly an effort, a partnership between school and home to ensure that we are monitoring our own symptoms and the symptoms of those um, in our care and doing that on a regular basis. These are really good habits to be in the, in the 
regular practice of doing so that when we come back on site, we can have the best chance of um, being healthy and safe and not just opening our doors, but keeping our doors open. Um, and as we move into the holiday season, um, just a reminder, you're hearing it all over. I know people are tired. I know they're tired of hearing it. I know people want things to be back to normal and they want their normal holiday traditions. Um, but I just wanted to emphasize that our behaviors and what we do um, over the holiday season, over the winter break, um, will, will have an impact on not just our families, but the larger communities. And we, just a reminder to uh, you know, avoid crowds and large gatherings, practice the three Ws, wear your face to mask covering, watch your distance, wash your hands. If your family must travel, please follow the guidelines and recommendations of the Illinois Department of Public Health and the CDC. Um, it is truly important that um, we are doing everything we possibly can to bring those levels of community transmission down and ensure that we can open our schools and keep them open. And that is truly what we all want. Um, we want our staff together, we want our students together, and we want to be able to do what we know we can do best in person, um, and that's support our kids. Um, there will be additional communication coming from the building level um, or program level prior to um, the transitions and we will have an update at the board meeting on January 11th. At that time, we will be in a period of full remote, um, but we will be preparing for that transition the following week, that Tuesday after the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. So that's January 19th. Um, I do want to remind the community that we have a wealth of resources, community resources available that we are here to connect you to. We have information on our website and you can certainly reach out for help with anything from technology to food to um, other community resources or support. Um, we know that in normal circumstances, the holidays can be a very challenging time for families. Um, and we want you to know that we will connect you and support you and however, however we possibly can. Our Meals to Go um, Nutrition Services Program will not be operating over winter break, but we have two pickups scheduled this week, um, Tuesday, December 15th, and Thursday, December 17th, where we will provide meal kit of seven day supply of food um, at the pickups this week, and then we will resume the regular service on Tuesday, January 5th. So we encourage our community to take, um, take a full advantage of that um, and, and feed our kiddos. So I am um, open to any questions that you may have. We have staff available on the, the virtual side of the board meeting as well, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have.